Good day, grade 12s. I would like to introduce myself. I'm an educator, tourism educator in the Sedibing East D7 district. The topic that I'm going to cover is a foreign exchange. In short, it is Forex. The work that we cover is Term 2's work, week 4 and 5. I'm going to split the work into two sessions. The first session is theory and the next session is calculations. So we're first going to start with week 4. Okay, so the introduction, according to the CAPS, this is what you need to master. The lesson will focus on the following. The gross domestic product and its benefits to the South African economy the multiplier effect, and how does it link with the gross domestic product? What is the difference between strong rand and weak rand? What is the relative strength and relative weakness of a currency at a specific time? The effect of exchange rates on international tourism, but not just international tourism, we must also focus on the effect of exchange rate on national tourism, and the reasons for the fluctuations in exchange rate. In order for you to do the calculations, you need to, in order for you to do the calculations, you need to focus on the definitions. Um, some of these definitions were also done in grade 11. For example, foreign currency, you did discuss that in grade 11, exchange rate, foreign exchange, gross domestic product, multiply effect and the two terms that we're only going to focus on in grade 12 is a strong rand and a weak rand. Now I'm going to discuss each one separately. In grade 11, the concept that you did was currency. Now what is currency? Currency is money, coins, etc. We have foreign currency and then we also have Local currency. Now, local currency is a currency that a country uses. For example, South Africa uses South African rand and then foreign currency. Foreign currency is mo money from another country. The examples that we have is US dollar. Now, when you do the currencies, um, it is very important to remember you need to know the currency code and you also need to know the currency symbol. But how do you remember the currency code and the currency symbol? If you look at um, the US, US stands for United States and the S is in the symbol. So the S has a line through it and then um, USD is the abbreviation for US dollar. The next one is Euros. Abbreviation is this um, code, E-U-R, and then euro starts with an E. So E, euros, um, the symbol is an E with two lines through it. Countries that use euros is Belgium, Austria, France, Luxembourg, Italy, Netherlands, Germany, Portugal, Greece, and Spain. The next currency is our British pound, also known as sterling pound. Countries that use a British pound is England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. I usually make a rhyme to remember the symbol. For example, if you look at British pound, now pound, it, it also rhymes with found. So the symbol looks like an upside down F for British pound or sterling pound. And then the abbreviation is GBP for Great British Pound. Foreign currency, um, Japanese yen, to remember the symbol, it's a Y with two lines in and then the abbreviation um, or the, the code is a JPY for Japanese yen. The next currency is your Australian dollar. Now, usually Australian dollar is, um, the symbol is AS with this line through it and the abbreviation AUD and that is your currency code. 
And then you know South African Rand. South African Rand, the symbol is R and the code is ZIR, ZAR, for Zuid Africa Rand. What is exchange rate? Now with exchange rate, um, I'm going to take an example. Let's say you are at a shop, you are at Truett's, and you are buying a pair of shoes. On the shoes, you will have a price tag. And that will show how much that shoes will cost. Now, it's exactly the same with uh, exchange rates. With exchange rate, that is how much you will pay for a certain foreign currency. So a rate used by banks and foreign exchange provides uh, providers to convert local currency, rent for South Africa, into foreign currency, or to convert foreign currency into local currency, rent. So, Truett will have a price tag on, the, on their shoes that the consumer can buy. Same with um, Truett will also buy the shoes from somewhere else. Now, with the next slide, I will explain that more with the exchange rate. The exchange rate, um, usually with the exchange rate, we use bank buying rate and bank selling rate. Now, the bank buying rate, if you look at the table on your left bank buying rate, um, it is your price that you will pay, or the, that is the price that the bank will pay for a foreign currency. And then the bank selling rate is the amount that the bank will pay if they want to sell the foreign currency. There will always be a difference between the two because the banks want to make a profit. And we always look at the viewpoint of uh, the South African bank. What will the South African bank do? I'm not going to explain it in detail now. I will explain that in the next session. The next term is foreign exchange. Foreign exchange is a grade 11 term. Now with foreign exchange, Let's first see what is the meaning of exchange. Now, exchange is when you change or when you um, trade um, something. Okay, now, foreign exchange is when you are changing money, foreign currency for rands. The conversion of one currency into the value of another currency. If you look at the picture, you will see... On the, uh, on the right, the guy has dollars and he wants to sell these dollars and buy euros. So he is going to exchange his dollars for euros. So exchanging is also when you... Exchanging is when you um, give your dollars for rands or rands for dollars. The next term that we are going to discuss is the gross domestic product. Now, the gross domestic product is the total financial value of goods and services produced in a country in one year. Basically, it is the income um, of the national, it's the income of the country. It shows how good the country's economy is doing. Now, if you look at the formula at the bottom. In order for us to find out what, what was the income for that specific year, you need to do this formula. Now, the consumption is how much did the consumers buy or uh, pay for services and goods, investments, how much did the um, industries invest, government expenditure, how much did the government spend on infrastructure, um, transport, etc. So how much did they spend? And then you must also look at the surplus between exports and imports. Now, why is this important in tourism? Now, tourism is part of the tertiary sector of South African economy. Tourism is also an export. Okay, if you look at the gross domestic product, and in the formula, exports. How is tourism part of exports? Well, the money generated from inbound tourism is often referred to as a form of export or revenue. Let's take the example of uh, gold. 
let's say South Africa is producing gold and now they are selling it in another country. They are going to get foreign currency for that gold. And um, it's the same with tourism. The only difference is when a tourist wants to experience tourism, they need to come to the country. So they have to experience tourism within South Africa. But they are still bringing in their foreign currency to South Africa. So it is an invincible export. Tourists have to come to South Africa to experience what South Africa has to offer and they are bringing their foreign currency and spending in South Africa because foreign tourists are visiting South Africa and they are bringing foreign currency into South Africa. Tourism is classified as an invincible export. What is the benefits to the South African economy? A healthy gross domestic product will result in more money for the government. So the government can spend more on infrastructure, such as hospitals. They can spend more money to improve the hospitals. They can spend more money to improve on schools. They can spend more money to improve the tourism um, industry. They also, because there's more money, they can create more jobs. So more jobs will be created. And because there's more jobs, more people will get money in and their living standards will improve. So their living standards will improve. The multiply effect. This is a concept that you have studied in grade 11. The multiply effect is very important and it also links with the gross domestic product because the tourist is coming to South Africa and he is spending his foreign currency. The multiply effect is when a tourist comes in and spend their money and that money is circulating in the local community or the local economy. So the international tourist brings money in Money is spent on services that are provided by the tourism industry. And this services, for example, um, accommodation establishment, such as hotels, guest houses, transport, such as water transport, rail transport, road transport, air transport, extraordinary modes of transport, activities such as bungee jumping, hiking, skydiving, game drives, and also attractions such as Gold Reef City, Sun City, Kruger National Park, Table Mountain. So the tourists coming from another country, they will spend their money on these services. All the money spent by the tourists is filtered and shared through the different service providers who provided these goods and services for the tourists. Meaning that the money that they are using are going to be used in the local economy in the local community because as soon as money is spent at a hotel or um, at an attraction staff needs to be paid and the staff will now go to ShopRite or checkers and they will spend that money again somewhere else so the the money keeps on circulating in the economy tourism has a direct and indirect impact on the gross domestic product and this sets the multiplier effect into motion. The reason why it's direct impact is because the tourist directly spends his money at the hotel and the staff at the hotel is paid. Indirect um, impact is when the local community also gets some of that money, that especially when the staff pays or buys uh, products at Checkers, Truets, etc. I'm also going to give you a nice example that follow. Let's say, for example, this tourist comes from America and he wants to visit South Africa. He is going to spend his money on the following. He will spend his money on transport, accommodation, attractions, food and activities, as I explained earlier. We are going to focus on one element. So this tourist decides to stay in a hotel. At the hotel, he made use of the laundry service, the mini bar, and ordered food at the restaurant. 
but there's also people working at the hotel. We've got receptionist, we've got um, a bartender, we've got a cleaner, and it is time to check out and he has to pay for his stay. This means that the tourist now is spending directly at the hotel. Bartenders, restaurant staff, laundry services, they need to get a salary. They use that salary to buy groceries, to buy clothes, to buy or to pay for transport and also to buy fast food, etc. So the local community are also benefiting and this is indirect revenue. Just a short explanation if you look at the graph in front of me. So the new hotels are set up. They create jobs directly. The local businesses supply services and then other companies are attracted to the area. So they will invest. This means that more jobs are indirectly created. Um, workers will spend money on local areas and that will also increase the revenues. Tax can be used to improve the infrastructure, it can be used to improve the image of the business, it can be used to improve the tourism industry. Then um, some of the money might um, leak because of imports. We need to know what is the difference between a strong rand and a weak rand. Now, I'm first going to focus on strong rand. When you, when you study, if you study strong rand very well, then the weak rand is just the opposite. Let's say, for example, in the exam, they decide to um, ask the weak rand, but you studied the strong rand. It is exactly the opposite. So I'm going to focus on the strong rand um, and also give examples of the weak rand and then, but you will see it's exactly the opposite. Now, strong rand, the other word or another word for strong rand is hard currency. It is the value compared to other currencies um, is improving. Money from country that is politically and economically stable, so there's no strikes or little strikes, there's no looting, um, there's also no civil war, and the economy is strong. If a country has a strong rand, they can buy more foreign currency. Um, South Africa outbound tourism is affordable and exports are more expensive. The concept weak rand. Now, weak rand is also known as a soft currency. So the value compared to other currencies has depreciated over time. Money from a country that is not politically and economically stable. So there's strikes, there's looting, um, there is civil war, and the economy is not strong. They can buy less foreign currency. So this means it is more expensive for um, a country to travel or for people to travel abroad. South Africa outbound tourism is more expensive and exports are more affordable. In the current situation, um, we have the coronavirus, COVID-19. And you know that unfortunately, the whole tourism in industry is, um, has stopped completely. Now, tourism, as you know, is the industry that brings in the third most money in the um, country. So it is a problem because now South Africa is losing a lot of money. What does it mean? It means that the South African rand is weakening. Accommodation establishments are closed. Restaurants are closed. Um, attractions, activities, everything is on, um, is, has, tots, has stopped completely. So the country is losing a lot of money. After lockdown, if everything is back to normal, 
um, it will be very expensive for South Africans to travel to another country. So it's going to be very expensive for us to travel to the UK. It's going to be expensive for us to travel to America. It's going to be expensive for us to travel um, to Europe um, because we are going to have or we have a weak rand. But um, as soon as everything is back to normal and tourists can come um, to South Africa to visit South Africa, it is going to be much cheaper, much affordable for foreign tourists to come to South Africa and spend their foreign currency here. So as soon as um, foreign tourists come to South Africa, they're going to spend foreign currency and this will improve our economy again. This will create jobs. Uh, it, it will create more jobs. What is the effect of a weak currency? The positive thing is there's more foreign tourists coming into South Africa. Um, so they bring in more money and they can also get more currency or more rands for their currency. So the foreign tourists will receive more rand for their currency. So they can spend more money. Um, this means that they have a higher buying power. They can spend more at shops. They can buy more souvenirs. They can stay longer because they've got more money. And um, they can also travel to different part parts of South Africa because they now have um, more rands for their currency. It is expensive for us to travel abroad. I just mentioned that. And this will lead to an increase in the South African gross domestic product and the economy will increase. The reason why it will lead to an increase in the gross domestic product is because foreign currency is now coming into South Africa. So it, they are contributing to the exports, which is part of the gross domestic product. And um, this will also lead to job crea creation and the economy can grow. If you look at the effect of a weak currency and you study the effect of a weak currency and they ask for a strong currency in the exam, you can go look at the opposite. Now, the effect of a weak currency, I'm going to use this slide and then I'm going to give you the opposite, which is a strong currency. What is the effect of a strong currency? Now, the effect of a strong currency on um, you know, the effect of, the, of a strong currency is that there's going to be less foreign visitors because now it's going to be more expensive for tourists to come into South Africa. The foreign tourists will receive less rands for their currency because um, it's a stronger currency. They can spend um, less money, so their buying power is decreasing. The purchasing power um, for, for local people are increasing so they can buy more domestically. It is very, it's uh, much affordable to travel to another country and this will le lead to a decrease in the South African gross domestic product because foreign currency is now going out of the country. And it can also cause job losses and the economy is now going to decline again. So it's exactly the opposite here is your effect of a strong currency like I just mentioned. Um, the same with factors contributing to a weak currency. If you're going to study the factors contributing to a weak currency and in the exam they ask for a strong currency, you just mention the opposite. Okay, so for the factors contributing to a weak currency is a lower interest rate. With the lower interest rate, it means that it is now more affordable to buy a house on credit or to buy a um, transport, a car on credit because the interest rate is lower. Um, higher inflation rate, uh, poor domestic economy, so it, there's a lot of um, people without jobs, political unrest, there's looting, there is strikes and civil war, spend more on importing than earning from exporting. So they are getting products from outside instead of um, 
exporting products so that they can get foreign currency and then the government debt is increasing. Exactly the same again with um, a strong currency. What is the factors contributing to a strong currency? The opposite. Um, a strong currency has a higher interest rate. A strong currency uh, has a lower inflation. Factors contributing to a strong currency is a strong domestic economy. There's political stability. They spend less on importing and more on exporting. And there's less government debt. And there's the factors contributing to a strong currency, the exact opposite of a weak currency. So study the one element, very, very good. And then if they do ask in the exam, if they do ask another um, or the opposite, you just mention the opposite. Fluctuations in the exchange rate. Now, the meaning fluctuations. Fluctuations means change. So the exchange rate changes every single day. It can change every single minute. Fluctuation is the term for the, these constant changes or variations, the value going up or the value going down. Now, there's a lot of things that can um, cause these ups and downs. Currency trade on the economic markets causes these fluctuations or changes, but there's other factors that influence the fluctuations in the exchange rate. For example, inflation. Um, inflation can go up or inflation can go, or the inflation can be higher or the inflation can be lower. Interest rates can go up or interest rates can go down. The trade balance, the terms of trade, the government debt, political and economic instability and employment outlook of a country. Now with the next work, I am going to give you a picture and then you need to identify what factor is now influencing the exchange rate. I'm going to give you a second to think and tell or think and um, yeah, just think about the answer. Okay, so this is your political and economical instability. And then the next one. Okay, the answer is there. It is inflation. The next one. Okay, so this is your trade balance. So you can spend on imports um, versus your spend on imports versus giving money out. Uh, sorry, you spend on imports versus earnings from exports, and this means you how much money are you giving out and how much money are you giving or getting in. And then also your trade um, terms of trade. So the ratio export prices to import prices. And then the next one. This is your interest rate. Government debt. and your employment outlook of a country. Let's have a look 
at the exchange rate table. I'm going to focus on the flags, I'm going to focus on the codes, and then I'm also going to focus on the arrows, the red and green arrows. Okay, now the first one is US dollars. The green arrow means it went up. Okay, then we have euros. What did the euros do? Did it go up or go down? Was there a drop or was there a rise in value? There was a drop in value. And then also your um, rands, was there a rise or drop in value? There was a drop in the value. Let's have a look at the next slide. Is there a drop or rise in the value? If you look at the top part, you will see there's a dollar and then at the bottom there is rands. Now you will see there's only one dollar, but there is many um, notes for or many hundred rands. This means that the dollar is stronger than the rands. And it also shows that the rands dropped. If you, it, in, it is indicated with the arrow. Okay. We have to focus on the effect of the exchange rates on international tourism and also a little bit domestic tourism. If this is um, very similar to, well, this is weak rand and strong rand. So if you do study weak rand and strong rand very good, then you will also master this part. So there's a fall, if there's a fall in the value of the South African rand, it is going to be expensive for South Africans to travel to the to UK or to travel to America or to travel to Europe. So it's going to be very expensive. But it will be affordable for foreigners to travel within South Africa. The, there's also going to be growth in economy because there's going there's more foreign currency coming into a country and um, there's going to be more foreign exchange. That contributes to the multiply effect. When there's a rise in value of the South African rand, it's going to be affordable for South Africans to travel internationally. It's going to be expensive for South Africa to travel within South Africa. It's going to be more expensive for foreigners to travel in South Africa there's going to be a decrease in the economy because there's going to be less foreign currency. I would just like to thank you for the opportunity. And again, I am Mrs. Denise Mayberg from the Sedibank East D7 district. You, I would like to just tell you to please study very hard and do your best while you can't go to school. Thank you very much.